Come, ye thankful people, come, raise the song of harvest home. All is safely gathered in, ere the winter storms begin. God, our Maker, does provide for our wants to be supplied. Come to God's own temple, come, raise the song of harvest home. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Thank you all for watching. Today's Mass is being offered for Charlie Hinsey, Gwendolyn, Arase, Wayne Ladner, John and Sonny Belkis, the parishioners of Most Holy Trinity, Geraldine and uh, Oliver Swanye, uh, Carl Bowser, Tom Ketchum, Kerry Ziffel, Betty G. Nikes, Greg and Katie Nolte, David and Penny Trutel. To prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you are the way, the truth, and the life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to, to God, God in the highest and on earth peace to people, people of good will. will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks to your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Please bow your heads and pray in silence for Gwyn Asaret, Wayne Ladner Jr., John and Sonny Belkus, the parishioners of Most Holy Trinity, Geraldine and Oliver Swanye, Carl Bowser, Tom Ketchum, Kerry Ziffel, Betty G. Nikis, Greg and Kitty Nulty, Charlie Hensey, David and Penny Trutel. Let us pray. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace, that made fervent in hope, faith, and charity, they may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. There is no God besides you who have the care for all that you need show you have not unjustly condemned. For your might is the source of justice. Your mastery over all things makes you lenient to all. For you show your might when the perfection of your power is disbelieved. And in those who know you, you rebuke eternity. But though you are master of might, you judge with clemency. And with much lenience, you govern us. For power, whenever you will, attends you. And you taught your people by these deeds that those who are just must be kind. And you gave your children good ground for hope that you would permit repentance for their sins. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Lord, you are good and forgiving. Lord, you are good and forgiving. You, O oh Lord, are good and forgiving.
abounding in kindness to all who call upon you. Hearken, O Lord, to my prayer, and attend to the sound of my pleading. Lord, you are good and forgiving. All the nations you have made shall come and worship you, O Lord, and glorify your name. For you are great and you do wondrous deeds. You alone are God. Lord, you are good and forgiving. You, O Lord, are God, merciful and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in kindness and fidelity. Turn toward me and have pity on me. Give me your strength to your servant. Lord, you are good and forgiving. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, the Spirit comes to the aid of our weakness. For we do not know how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes with inexpressible groanings. And the one who searches hearts knows what is the intention of the Spirit, because he intercedes for the Holy Ones according to God's will. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and of earth, you have revealed to little ones the mystery of the kingdom. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus proposed another parable to the crowd, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a man who sowed good seed in his field. While everyone was asleep, his enemy came and sowed weeds all through the wheat and then went off. When the corn grew and bore fruit, the weeds appeared as well. The slaves of the household came to him and said, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where have the weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. He answered, he, he, His slave said to him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? He replied, No. If you pull up the weeds, you might uproot the wheat along with them. Let them grow together until harvest. Then at harvest time, I will say to the harvesters, First collect the weeds and tie them in bundles for burning but gather the wheat into my barn. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This week we had a long gospel and a short gospel, so I went with the short because I love the story of the wheat and the weeds. Usually this time of the year I would be in Ireland, and one of my favorite things to do in Ireland is walk through the fields of corn whether it be oats, wheat, or barley. And the amazing thing about this parable, in Jesus' time, the weed that was most common among wheat was darner. And if you look at it, you couldn't tell the difference between the wheat and the darner. 
it's only at harvest time that the seed would uh, you could tell the difference after it, 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 it put out the seed that you could tell the difference that's why it was very smart to leave them until harvest time and Jesus uses that to explain evil and the truth of the matter is there's good and bad in each of us and it's a lifetime battle to overcome evil and to do good there's no such thing as bad people and good people we're a mixture of both I'm a mixture of bad and good you're a mixture of bad and good the line down every human being is between good and evil any one of us is capable of great evil the worst thing that can be committed any one of us is capable of doing it and the best that can be done anyone is capable of doing it that's why it's so important that we make good choices and we try and overcome evil and be the best we can be Lou Holtz is a famous coach in the United States he's retired now so he goes around giving talks and he says he asked his team to do three things first do the right thing there is never a time not to do the right thing there is never a wrong time to do the right thing and there's never a right time to do the wrong thing so do the right thing secondly do it to the best of your ability and it would be great if everyone would live life to the best of their ability because we're all capable of goodness we're all capable of doing great things but sometimes we forget to aim high and to be the best we can be or as the church says become a saint we're all capable of being saints and the third thing Lou Holtz said was love especially the people closest to you love your family love your children he says you can't take your money to heaven with you but you can take your children and we should never forget that and he says if you want to be happy for an hour eat a steak if you want to be happy for a day play golf if you want to be happy for a week go on a cruise if you want to be happy for a lifetime have a relationship with Jesus Christ and follow his roadmap Amen. Amen. Please stand now as we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father for all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us made him for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was he conquered by the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for Wayne Ladner Jr., for Gwen Azaresh, Charlie Hensey, John and Sonny Belkus, the parishioners of Most Holy Trinity, Geraldine and Olivia Swanye, Carl Bowser, Tom Ketchum, Kerry Ziffel, Betty G. Nikes, Greg and Kitty Nolte, David and Penny Trutel. Let us pray for these and for all those who have asked for special prayers, especially those that are dealing with illness or who have recently died and for their grieving families. Let us pray in faith. That the age in our community may be sustained by our thoughtfulness and friendship. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That we may wait for God's harvest time and not pass harsh judgment on others. 
let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. That those entrusted with dispensing justice and interpreting the law may look to Christ as the source of wisdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Father, all the elements of nature obey your command. Calm the storms and hurricanes that threaten us and turn our fear of your power into praise of your goodness. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For the dead of our parish and all our families, especially Wilfred Moran, Elizabeth Anderson, Mary Claire Debro, Curly Dido, May they rest in the peace of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our heart, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. Almighty God, help us to make good choices, to do our best, and to live in your love and produce good fruit through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual thread. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who in one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the law, except we pray this sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel, so that what each is offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while we dwell in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, to whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full, full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the heart. in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. After communion today, David Hebert will be giving a reflection on St. Ambrose of Milan. He lived from between the years 333 to 397, and this is what he said about the Eucharist. He had great faith in the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist, and I hope all of you watching will recognize the presence of Jesus in the Holy Eucharist. He said, when the time comes for the confection of the venerable sacrament, then the priest uses not his own words, but the words of Christ. Therefore, it is the word of Christ that confects the sacrament, before it is consecrated is his bread. For where the words of Christ come in, it is the body of Christ. Finally hear him saying, All of you take and eat of this, for this is my body. And before the words of Christ, the chalice is full of wine and water. But where the words of Christ have been operative, it is made the blood of Christ, which redeems his people. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sitting down your spirit upon them like you do fall. 
so that there may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've had us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Louis our Bishop, and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom and the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of Christ's peace, mindful of the coronavirus. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the Supper of the Lamb. 
Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O oh Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated now as David Hebert gives us a nice talk on St. Ambrose, one of the great fathers of the church. Hello. Hello out there in YouTube land. Today, I'm going to give a talk on St. Ambrose, Bishop of Milan. St. Ambrose was born around the year 340 under the name Aurelius Ambrosius. He was born into a Roman Christian family and was the youngest of two siblings, one sister, Marcelina, and one brother, Satyrus. There is a legend that as an infant, a swarm of bees settled on his face while he lay in the cradle leaving behind a drop of honey. His father considered this a sign of his future eloquence and honeyed tongue. For this reason, bees and beehives often appeared in this saint's symbology. His father was the governor of Gaul, located in modern day France and parts of Belgium, Western Germany, and Northern Italy. His father died at an early age and St. Ambrose's mother was forced to bring the family to Rome. There, Ambrose and Satira studied literature, law, and rhetoric. Ambrose also studied and became fluent in Greek. This will serve him well later, as we'll see. His eloquence and energy were noticed by the Roman ruling factions, and following his father's footsteps, he was appointed governor of Northern Italy with its capital in Milan, just after his 30th birthday. Ambrose governed in a manner that won him the respect of the people. He was governor for two years when he would be called to settle a dispute between the Nicene Christians, that's us, the Catholics following the Nicene Creed, more on that later, and the Arians. Twenty years earlier, Emperor Constantius appointed Bishop Auxentius, who believed in Arianism and worked to make Milan an Arian stronghold. In that day, recall, the emperor actually ratified all bishops' selections before finalized to the pope. When Bishop Auxentius died, there was serious contention between the Catholics and the Arians on whom the next bishop should be. They were at each other's throats and on the verge of rioting. Governor Ambrose, in an attempt to calm both sides, delivered an impassioned speech about the duty of Christian charity. Much to his surprise, suddenly there began chants, Ambrose for Bishop, Ambrose for Bishop. Ambrose was shocked. To put it in modern day terms, he must have looked around and said, me, for real? He was a governor, not a theologian. And while he was a devout Christian, he was not yet baptized, as in those days, baptism was put off until later. No, the crowds were serious. They wanted Ambrose to be their next bishop. Well, there was some hope for Ambrose. His election had to first be ratified by the local bishops of the province. Plus, there was a decree prohibiting newly baptized persons from being ordained. Surely the bishops would see electing an unbaptized person, um, um, an unbaptized person as uncanonical. Nope, they all thought it was a perfect choice. Ah, uh, he still had some hope though. The, the emperor had to ratify the choice. And surely the emperor would not agree, not wanting to lose one of his most favored governors to the clergy. Nope, to his surprise, Emperor Valentian I was much in favor, saying it was an honor that one of his governors would be considered worthy of the office of bishop. So Ambrose did what anyone else would do. 
He went into hiding at his house and one of his friends, a prominent senator. When that senator found out that the emperor had ratified his selection, his friend pretty much ratted him out, let the authorities know Ambrose was at his house. Ambrose was duly baptized, and one week later, on December 7th, the year 374, he was ordained bishop of Milan. Now bishop, Ambrose sold all his property and gave it to the poor, saving supporting his sister Marcelina, who is now a consecrated virgin in Rome. He begins his study of the Bible and the church fathers, their scripture and tradition, with the help of a wise priest named Simplicanius. Remember how Ambrose studied Greek in his early days? Ambrose's knowledge of Greek now comes in handy as he can read the New Testament in its original language, as well as the church forefathers like Athanasius, Origen, and Basil. As mentioned, Arianism was alive and well, and Ambrose was dead opposed to their view. Let's briefly review what the Arianism and Arian heresy is. It is named after a bishop named Arius. This movement believed that Jesus was not equal to God, but instead, Jesus is a creature made by God and in God's likeness, just as we are. Yes, Jesus was a supreme creature, or God-like, and that he could perform miracles, and yes, he even rose from the dead. But there's a hierarchy where God the Father is higher than God the Son and the Holy Spirit. Now let's take a minute and think about that implication. What does that mean for us? For starters, how does Jesus bring us salvation if he's not equal to God? If he's not God himself. The Trinity becomes a subordinate relationship instead of co-equal of, of the three members of the Trinity. So to answer these questions, the Council of Nicaea was convened in 325. And from that, we have the Nicene Creed, which we profess every week, that Jesus is God from God, light from light, true God from true God, consubstantial with the Father. Of course, try as we may, the Trinity is still a mystery that we as mere mortals have, cannot fully understand. Back to Ambrose. Even with the Nicene Creed, Arianism is alive and well. There is much to do to counter this movement. He received a letter from Bishop Basil of Caesarea, urging him to press the battle against the Arian heresy. This he does, and for the rest of his life he will do. He has two famous run-ins with the new emperor, Valentian II and his mother, Justina, who was an Arianist. Valentian II was a young child, and Justina wielded much power over his son's decisions. In one instance, there were many Gothic barbarians serving in the Roman army. And, and in one instance, there were many Gothic barbarians serving in the Roman army in Mahan that were converted to Christianity by Arian missionaries. Justina coerced her son to demand that Ambrose hand over one of his churches to them to worship, where an Arian bishop would be celebrating Mass. Ambrose flat out refused. He was threatened with force, but he would not budge, saying, I have said what a bishop ought to say. Let the emperor do what the emperor ought to do. Justina sent soldiers to seize the church, but Ambrose and many of his people arrived first. One famous participant was St. Monica, the mother of Ambrose is perhaps the most famous student, St. Augustine. The group barricaded themselves in on Palm Sunday. They were surrounded by the soldiers and began to pray and fast. During this time, Ambrose taught his flock a new way of singing. He wanted the congregation more engaged, so he wrote hymns in a new style where the congregation was divided in half. Each half alternated singing verses. This is called antiphonal singing sang like this for a week before the army finally left. That method of singing was long-lasting, however, and it became the dominant music until Gregorian chant was popularized several centuries later. The next year, Justina tried again to obtain churches. She had her son declare Arianism legal and made it a capital offense for anyone interfering with them. Then she demanded churches from Ambrose again. Still, Ambrose would not yield replying, if you, if you demand my person, I am ready to submit. Carry me to prison or death, I will not resist. But I will never betray the church of Christ. I will not call upon the people to protect me. I will die at the foot of the altar rather than desert it. 
Justina knew Ambrose was loved by the people and did not dare lay a hand on him. In fact, when soldiers were sent to enforce this decree to take the church, they instead went inside to pray with the Catholics. Ambrose also knew that no matter what our status in life, we are all sinners and need to repent for our sins. As the past attempts by Justina, there was a Catholic emperor, Theodosius, who did much to help rid the hold of Arianism. He and St. Ambrose became close friends. It was an unfortunate surprise to Ambrose to hear that Theodosius, in an attempt to put down a riot that killed the governor of Thessalonia, surrounded the city and killed 7,000 innocent men, women, and children. Ambrose wrote a stern letter and grieving letter to him and made it clear that should Theodosius appear at his church, Ambrose would not allow them in and stop the liturgy. Ambrose then mercifully implored the emperor to perform public penance by standing outside the church in sackcloth, begging for the prayers of those entering the church. Now, we must keep in mind that Emperor Theodosius wielded much earthly power. He could have easily banished or even killed Ambrose. Thankfully, that was not the case, and remarkably, the emperor did his penance for several months before being admitted back into communion with the Christians. Theodosius said several years later that Ambrose was the only bishop he'd met truly worthy of the office. A few years later, Theodosius died in the arms of his bishop. Can you only imagine if our political leaders would respect the teachings of their bishops and if our bishops held all members of their flock accountable for their moral actions? One last fun fact. Ambrose believed in the local diversity in the church. St. Augustine, now a student of St. Ambrose, went to Rome and was dismayed to find that Saturdays were days of feast, while in Milan, Saturdays were... Oh, sorry, St. Take a step back, sorry. St. Augustine went to Rome with this made fun that Saturdays were days of fasting, where in Milan they were days of feasting. Ambrose's advice to Augustine was it was allowable to follow the Roman customs while in Rome. This advice has lasted through the years, and the origin of the well-known saying, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. Ambrose died a natural death on April 4th, the year 397. He is recognized as one of the original Western doctors of the church. Ambrose is the patron saint of beekeepers, beggars, learners, and Milan, and his feast day is December 7th. Thank you. Very good, David, and hope everyone watching knows all about St. Ambrose now. The Lord be with you and with, with your spirit. spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Our closing song today is something that uh, many millions of people know, at least the tune. I encourage you to sing along with me. I danced in the morning when the world was begun. And I danced in the moon and the stars and the sun. And I came down from heaven and I danced on earth. At Bethlehem I had my birth. Dance then wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he. And I'll lead you all wherever you may be. We got our weekly raffle here for our church building, and the winner gets $100. The tickets are $25, so I've never won it yet. We've been doing it six years, so hopefully today will be my lucky day. No, sorry. <laughs> a good one, though. Kelly McKnight. <laughs> Kelly, Kelly, a good, a good lady. And Father Louis, Father Tommy, and myself were uh, organizing a fundraiser for our home church in Ireland. Tickets are $110 or 100 euro. If you buy them in Ireland, you get a free confession from Father Louis. Father Tommy will give you a free beer if you buy one from him. I'll give you a bottle of holy water. So uh, please contact us if you'd like a ticket. Just one week left. The drawing is the 31st of July. And you've got a cute email here. My name is Gossip. 
I have no respect for justice. I maim without killing. I break hearts and ruin lives. I am cruel and malicious and gather strength with age. The more I am courted, the more I am bleed. I flourish at every level of society. My victims are helpless. They cannot protect themselves against me because I have no name and no face. To trace me down is impossible. The harder you try, the more elusive I become. I am nobody's friend. Once I tarnish a reputation, it is never the same. I topple governments and ruin marriages. I ruin careers and cause sleepless nights, heartache and indigestion. I spawn suspicion and generate grief. I make innocent people cry into their pillow. Even my name hisses. I am gossip. It's a good one. Thank you all for watching. You all have a good day.